All right, so we've talked about how to factor trinomials when that a, that coefficient for x squared, is 1. And that's pretty simple. Now we're going to get a little bit more complicated. Um, but I got a really cool method for you guys that will help you out a lot, okay? So now we're going to look at when a doesn't equal 1. And the first thing you got to do, which so many people forget, because so many people just get on robotic automatic mode, always check. So you see here, I have a 3 here, right? First, just double check, can you factor out a greatest common factor? And in this case, you can. You can take out a 3, so it'd be 3, enough with x squared minus 4x plus 3. And then look, I can factor this factor. And so this would be x, uh, now let's see here, x and x. It's got to multiply to positive 3, but it's going to add to a negative, so I know that both my numbers here are negative, they'd be negative 3, negative 1. And that adds to negative 4 and multiply. So there we go. But here's a big mistake people always forget here. They forget to bring the 3 down. So make sure you bring that 3. This is completely factored form. If you leave out that 3, that is wrong. Okay? So this is the factored form. So that's the first thing you do. Always check for that greatest common factor. Okay? It'll make your life a lot easier. Now, let's move on, and let's say we try taking something out and nothing happens. Now we're we'll faced with this. Now, if you think about it, it's still in the same kind of trinomial format, so we know it's going to be two binomials multiplied. Now, instead of x and x, you notice that the first term is going to be 5x squared. So that means one of these must be a 5x, right, and the other must be an x. And this is where you have to be a little bit uh, savvy with how this works. Now, it's going to multiply to 7, and it's going to add up to negative 12. But be careful here, because when we multiply, when we FOIL this out or multiply it out, let me just show you over here. Whatever this, let's say we'll call this A, we'll call this B. Whatever you multiply the b by, you got to realize it's multiplied by 5 now, okay? And then a is multiplied just, you know, just with that x. So some people might say this. I'm um, looking for two numbers to multiply to 7 now. Okay, I'll be honest. This example is easy. 7 and 1, right? Those are the only two numbers. Now you're going to have to think, okay? How can I get negative 12? You might be like, I can't get negative 12 with these. But remember, one of these numbers is multiplied by that 5. Okay? And because it's going to be negative, I know that both of these must be negative. So you might say, okay, 7 and 1. Do I multiply the 5 with the 7 and get 35 and 1? No. Do I multiply? And you might say, oh, I multiply the 1 by 5 to get 7 and 5. That will give me 12. So that means it's going to be, now you got to be careful here. The 1 must multiply with the 5, so when this 5x must multiply over here, this has got to be a 1. And then this 7 will be over here. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're like, oh my gosh, this just probably is going to take a lot longer. Um, I'm just showing you this is one way you can do it. you got to kind of play around with the numbers, analyze and see how you can, what you multiply with the 5 in order to get this number, and this is how you factor it. Now, don't be discouraged, because I have a much quicker way I'm gonna show you, but I first wanna show you how you can do it bare bones without any of these little tricky methods that I'm gonna show you. Let's try another one like this, okay? Bear with me. So, first look for the greatest common factor. I don't see anything that comes out of here, right? Uh, so, I know that it's going to be this binomial form, and I know it's going to be 3x and x, right? That'll give me that 3x squared. Now, you got to be careful. 3 is going to multiply with one of the factors, and the other one's just going to be multiplied by 1. So 22, what multiplies to 22? I got 2 to 11, and I have 1 and 22. And one of them's got to be multiplied by 3, and it's got to add up to be negative 5. Now, this is where you're like, okay, now you got to start playing around with numbers. So I'm going to look at the 2 and the 11 real quick. And because 
it's going to multiply to a negative. I know one's positive, one's negative, but you can't write that in just yet. You got you got to know which one you multiply to the positive three. You know, it, it's just a lot of other factors here, and it's going to be equal to negative five when you add them up. So, okay, here we go. Let's try this out. Um, if I multiply the two by three, I get a six and 11. Hey, this works. I can get a negative five out of the six and 11. Um, this has got to be a negative 11, right? Now you got to be careful here. When you say negative 11 and six, you can't put negative 11 and six in, right? You got to put negative 11 and the two in. Remember the two was multiplied by the three to get you six. So that means this three X is going to multiply with a two. So it'll be plus two here, and then it would be negative 11 here. And I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, I really don't want to do this. Um, and you know what, in the next example, I'm going to show you why you really, really don't want to do it like this. Okay, some of you are pretty good at this. Some of you are very quick and you know, that's up to you. If you want to do it this way, be my guest. Now, here's my factored form. Now, the, when this runs into, now some of you who are like, okay, I can do this. I know how to work with these numbers. Well, guess what? When you come to something like this, it just gets even more complicated. And I'm wondering if you can kind of figure out why. If you look at here, no, no greatest common factor out of each of these terms, and you'd be like, okay, well, you might say, okay, it's 4x and then x, right? 4x times x will give me this. Well, guess what? It could also be 2x and 2x, couldn't it? Which means now you got to figure about, oh, I got to multiply each one by 2. This one is just multiplied by 4 and by 1. And you're like, oh my gosh. It just kind of compounds the possibilities I have for this. And some of you might do this as a challenge. And then a lot of you are going to be like, oh my gosh. I don't want to do this. Okay? So you see... Just kind of guessing and checking and working with these numbers is not exactly the most efficient. Especially if I give you something like 20x squared, and then you're like, oh, shoot, it could be like x and 20x, it could be 2 and 10x, it could be 4 and 5x, and then it just makes the problem even more. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you what I like to call the trash can method. Okay. Now, I think there's some formal math term like the AC product, but that doesn't sound cool. I like to call it trash can method, okay? What you do in the trash can method is you're going to cheat first. This is acceptable, okay? Now, I know that when I do my binomial, that these two first terms must multiply to 4x squared. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cheat. I'm just going to say 4x and 4x. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. 4x times 4x gives me 16x squared. You're right. What we're going to do is we're going to later on adjust it back. So you're like, what? This is what I mean. It's almost as if I multiplied this by 4, right? And it is true. What you're doing is kind of multiplying by 4, so we're cheating by multiplying by the same a. Later on, we're going to take out that 4, and I'll show you why. So what you do here is this. What you do is you take 4 times negative 15, and you get negative 60, right? And what you do here, now you might say, how about we do 4 times this middle 4? And you're just going to have to trust me on this. Don't do that. Because later on, what we're going to do is going to take care of that. So the only thing you need to do is after you cheat by doing 4x and 4x, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply 4 times this negative 15 and get negative 60. Okay? Now I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, what are we doing here? Trust me, as you do more of this, you'll get more familiar with this. So what you do now is, let me change color because we haven't changed color in a while. Why is this not showing my ink tools. Hello. Okay, fine. It doesn't want me to change color. We're going to look for two numbers that multiply to negative 60 and add to 4. Just like we've been doing before, right? 
And this time you don't have to worry about multiplying by four to one of them. Just do it the normal way you did it, okay? So negative 60 and four, let's see, 60 is six and 10. Um, hey, I can get four with that, right? Because it's negative 60, I know that it's going to be, uh, let's see, positive 10 and uh, negative six, right? That'll add, give me that four. Now, you notice I just put it down here, right? I don't care which one goes to which one. Now, this looks like the final answer, but it's not. Because clearly 4x times 4x gives me 16x squared. Now, this is, what's, this is why I call this the trash can method. You see how I cheated by this 4? I multiplied by 4. So now at the very end, I'm going to take out the trash. I'm going to can a factor of 4. You're like, what does that mean? It means I'm gonna take out a four out of one of these. Or I could kind of mix and match as long as I get a factor of four out. And this is what I mean. You see the, both these factors? You see I can factor both of them actually. Instead of taking four out of one of them, what if I take a two out of this first one and I get two x plus five? And then out of this second factor, what if I take a 2 out and I'm left with 2x minus 3? And you see how this 2 times 2, that equals 4. And what I'm going to do is, guess what? I'm going to trash can it. Get out of here. Because I cheated by 4, in the end, I'm just going to can it. And guess what? I've, I've kind of made up for that cheating of 4. That 4 is gone. And guess what you're left with? 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 3. Boom. Full proof right there. No guessing, okay? No trying out possibility, zero is your answer. You're like, whoa, does that really work all the time? If it's factorable, it is. Let's try another one, okay? I'm gonna go back to the first two problems we did and we're gonna do trash can method. And I know some of you are like, oh man, I don't think I'm gonna remember this. Well, let's, let's practice, okay? Now, because I can't factor anything out, and it's A is more than one, I'm gonna use a trash can method. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna make it 5x and 5x, just because I can and my teacher said I can. Now, when you do this, remember you gotta multiply the five by the seven, you get positive 35. Don't worry about the middle term. So look, what multiplies to 35 and what adds to negative 12? Let's see, 35, seven and five, oh! Seven and five will give me negative 12 if I make them both negative, right? So, oh, negative seven, negative five, boom. Now, because we cheated by five, we have to factor out a five, total of five. Now, look at this. Which of these factors can you take out a five directly from? Ah, this one, second one right here, right? So five comes out and you're left with x minus one, and I'm left with 5x minus 7. Now remember, this is called the trash can method because you're going to trash can this one, trash can this 5 that you cheated by. So guess what? My factor is 5x minus 7, x minus 1. Whoa, are you starting to come around? Are you starting to see how this is kind of nice? Instead of having to figure out what multiplies to what? This does work. And if you want, I can show you the nitty gritty details of it. Most people don't really care for it. And you know what? I don't really care for it either. But if you want me to show you, I can show you why it works this way, okay? And let's do the one we just did. Remember, this one was a pain, right? Um, 3x squared, let's try the trash can method because you can't take out a greatest common factor here. Let's uh, cheat by 3. Let's make this negative 66, right? 3 times negative 22 is negative 66. And then I'm going to cheat by doing 3x, 3x. All right, what multiplies 66? 11 and 6. Ooh, can I get a negative 5 somehow? You bet. And it's going to multiply negative 66. So let's see. It should be negative 11 and positive 6, right? And then let's see here. Oh, because we cheated by 3, we got a factor out of 3. Ah, this is easy. We could get a 3 out of here. This is left with x plus 2. And we just trash can that one, right? Because we cheated by that one. And then you just bring this down. Bam, here's my factor. Ooh, not too much to go on. Not too much to you know worry about and things like that. You see how nice that is? Now, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Okay, I guarantee. So, 
Now, when you come across things like this, okay, negative, especially a negative A, one thing that could be helpful so you don't deal with that negative is to kind of just factor out a negative one, okay? You don't have to, but I think sometimes it's a little bit easier to deal with um, just so you don't screw up your negatives, okay? And then so it'd be like this. And then when we have this, we can, I'm just gonna jump to the trash can method, just 24, right? And so I'm just gonna do 2x and then 2x, right? Now what multiplies to 24 and adds negative 11? Let's see, 8, 3, 6, 4, oh, 8 and 3, negative 11, right? Negative 8, negative 3. And then because I cheated by 2, I need to take a 2 out of one of these factors. I'll take it out of here. So uh, x minus 4. Some people, I like to show the 2 and then crossing out. Uh, some people don't do that. They just do x minus 4. Um, either way is fine. Just make sure you really know what you're doing, okay? And don't forget to bring that negative 1 down. Here is my factored form. Let's try another one. Now try these six on your own, okay? Um, what I'll do is, uh, actually first do these, uh, first do these four on your own. No, try them all on your own first. Actually, no, just do these four, okay? And then I'll show the answer soon. All right. Um, some of your orders of your factors might be the other way around. It doesn't matter. It, just, it doesn't matter because it's just multiplying. So check these out. Uh, for number four, I first took out that negative and then I realized, oh, I could take out a two as well. And trust me, the more you factor, greatest common factors you can take out, the easier it'll be with your numbers. And so um, that's that. Okay, if you need more time to look at it, you can pause. Now, if you look at the last two here, you might be like, oh, 6 times 24, that's like 144. That's a big number. But remember, you should always, always, always check to see if you can take something out first. Um, I can take out a 3. So if you take out a 3, you're left with 2x squared plus 15x minus 8. That's much easier to work with. And then when you do, you know, 2 times negative 8, that's negative 16. So what multiplies negative 16 and adds to 15? And don't forget to cheat. 2x, 2x, and this would be, what, positive 16 and negative 1. And then we get the 3. And because you cheated by 2, you got to take out a 2 somewhere. I'm going to take out a 2 out of this one, so it would be 3. Now, I'm not going to show the 2 canceling out, but you can see that this is what you would get as your answer. And then this last one over here, oh man, if you did nine times 180 and you tried that, oh, I feel, I don't wanna say I feel sorry for you, but remember, check greatest common factor first, please. So you can take out a nine out of all of them. Watch this, you get x squared plus eight x minus 20. You're like, oh, hey, it's back to one of these. You don't have to cheat, right? You got you got A is one. So you're like, okay, uh, what multiplies negative 20 adds to eight. I got, oh, X minus 10, uh, X plus 10, X minus two. Oh, look how nice that is, right? I know it's nicer when the A is one, not when it's not equal to one. But so please make sure you always check the greatest common factor and then use that trash can method if you need to. Okay, and so, um, you know, that's the, I believe that's in this video. Yep, all right, cool.